Bienvenue tout le monde. Welcome everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Laura Eschner. I am with Tamarack's Community Climate Transitions Initiative. I'm joined by um, a couple of colleagues today, um, yeah. Kiara and Jennifer from Tamarack, um, John and Marenica from uh, SDSN Canada, Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada. And Tamarack and SDSN co-host this monthly community of practice on localizing the sustainable development goals. Um, we'll put a link in the chat for you to learn more. But if you've registered for this as a public webinar um, and you're not part of the community, do feel free to join. It's open and accessible for everyone and um, you'll be able to stay on top of our future monthly calls. So this is one of the ones we're opening to the public, but typically we have um, just members only calls each month. So I want to begin by acknowledging that we're meeting today on unceded Indigenous land. SDSN Canada and Tamarack's offices are on the traditional territory of the Attawandara Neutral Anishinaabeg and Haudenosaunee peoples and Kitchener Waterloo is situated on the um, Haldimand Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes 10 kilometers on each side of the Grand River. I myself am calling from um, Jojage, colonially known as Montreal, which is um, the traditional and unceded territory of the Ganenkahaga peoples. And whenever I'm in conversations about the sustainable development goals, I'm always reminded that this is not the be all end all of frameworks for a more sustainable and equitable future. And we need to also be looking at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's 94 calls to action and UNDRIP um, are two of the, the key frameworks um, here in Canada in terms of ensuring uh, a better future for all. So um, just wanted to, to share those brief reflections. Uh, moving into the agenda today, we are um, I have an exciting lineup of panelists um, for you and I'm going to pass it over to Hillary uh, from IISD in a moment to uh, moderate that and then we'll have audience Q&A so please um, as you come up with questions jot them down you can put them in the chat at any time as well or you can wait for the Q&A session and raise your hand come off mute to share it's up to you however you prefer I see lots of uh, folks from our community practice and some new names as well so welcome everyone, feel free to take another minute to introduce yourself if you haven't yet. I'll start just introducing our guest speakers. So we have Hilary Rosentretter from um, International Institute for Sustainable Development, who is a policy advisor there. She will be moderating the discussion. Emily Cormier, Sustainability Coordinator with City of Sault Ste. Marie. Laura Rempel, City Planner with City of Winnipeg. And Lisa Kohler, Executive Lead on Climate Change Response and Sustainability with Halton Region. And all of these speakers were selected because of their tremendous leadership on the sustainable development goals at the municipal level. So without further ado, I'm going to share, um, pass it over to Hillary, and I'll be putting a link in the chat for um, full bios. So if you'd like to read more about our speakers, you can do so. Thanks. Over to you. Yes, welcome very much. Thank you so much, Laura. It's such a pleasure to be here um, as I've been participating in many of these uh, community practice calls so far, and I'm happy to see that we have quite a good turnout for this public call. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, having this discussion today. Um, we're looking to diving into the more governance side of the implement implementation of the SDGs, um, looking at how local governments are working to incorporate the sustainable development goals in their work. Uh, and of course, hopefully to learn some really helpful lessons on how the same can be done in your own communities. So without further um, Adieu. I'm going to begin with our first question. Um, this is meant to be conversational, so speakers, please feel free to jump in whenever. Um, but I'll start us off with Laura Rempel from the city of Winnipeg, where I am also based. Um, Laura, please, if you can, share a little bit about the um, SDGs within your community, um, such as when you first became aware of them uh, and how the framework has been incorporated in your government. Thank you so much, Hillary. It's wonderful to be here. Um, so in 2016, the city of Winnipeg started uh, the five-year review of our, our Winnipeg development plan. And so we were starting off asking our colleagues, had we accomplished what we had set out to do in the last few years? 
uh, if we'd achieved it. And it was difficult for them to say for sure what impact we had had. Um, and there weren't any specific measures in that plan. So we started researching, uh, searching, and we found the UNSDG framework. Um, and we began to learn from it and localize it. So it became an integral part of our development plan uh, based on a set of six goals um, that we localized. So we have leadership and good governance, environmental resilience, economic prosperity, good health and well being, social equity, and city building. So you know, nothing really surprising there, uh, but it, it was a, a more cohesive small set uh, for us to start organizing policy around um, and, and thinking more deeply about how we integrate that into systems uh, that existed in the city. So we just finished um, the approvals process for that development plan in May 2022. And uh, now the fun part begins to try to implement uh, that policy into organizational culture. And so along the way, we're very grateful to have uh, United Way Winnipeg and IISD um, who were supporting um, us and sharing information about PEG community indicators um, and how that fits into evidence-informed decisions. Um, and then that led to the, the recent uh, voluntary local review, which was exciting as well. So maybe that's it in a snapshot and I'll I'll pass it off to someone else. I can I can jump in. Um, so again, Emily Emily Cormier from the City of Sault Ste. Marie. Um, for those who may not know, because I see you've got a couple of people um, from away, um, Sault Ste. Marie is a small, uh, medium-sized municipality in northern Ontario. So Ontario, so we're about you know eight hours north um, of the uh, GTA area. Um, so I've known about the SDGs for a very long time, um, but where some conversations really started in our community about them, uh, in 2017, our community uh, developed a community development plan and report called A Common Cause and New Direction for Sault Ste. Marie. And the goal of this report is to work towards building Sault Ste. Marie as a vibrant community with a population of 100,000 people by 2037. So in 20, 20 years, grow our population, but do it in a way that is sustainable. Um, this plan has four pillars, um, pretty straightforward, economic growth and diversity, uh, social equity, cultural vitality, and environmental sustainability. Um, I'm more focused on the environmental sustainability side of things with my portfolio. Um, and like, you know, municipalities around the world, they've been looking for ways to integrate the SDGs into their community well-being metrics for a long time. You know, you've got leaders like Winnipeg who have done this, so we don't really need to reinvent the wheel. Um, and a lot of these municipalities are engaging in things called voluntary local reviews or VLRs, as I'm sure you're all aware. And so although these don't really have an official status, um, they have been a great way to help municipalities engage um, on, on building awareness about the SDGs and helping implement them in their communities. In 2019, um, our city started on the uh, update of our official plan, which is the primary land use planning document for municipalities in Ontario. And as we were going through this process, we were also developing our very first community greenhouse gas emissions plan and climate strategy. Uh, so. So at the same time, as we're updating our official plan, we started uh, reviewing this official plan and existing documents from a climate impact standpoint. And we we're also talking about, okay, how do we measure our progress? So this led to some conversations um, you know, with IISD about the tracking progress software, other community stakeholders who were looking at ways to get data more available in our community, not only on the environment, but on poverty, uh, social equity, um, things, things like that. So we've had some preliminary discussions. We did a really cool project at the start of this year and we're waiting to see the results. And I'll talk more about this later. Um, and we did a mini VLR, if you will, where we had students from uh, our local university, Algoma University, take a look at our official plan backgrounding document and run it through the SDGs. So they were looking at, you know, what are certain things 
um, in Sault Ste. Marie that align uh, with, with the SDGs and, and target international targets? How is our current planning direction in our official plan addressing any of the Canadian and international SDG targets? And are there any recommendations that we should think about um, in making progress on all of these targets and goals? So we've started the process. I would say we're kind of at the, the starting point here, um, but we're hoping that this final report will help be bridge some more conversations to the SDGs in our community. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lisa Kohler, as mentioned, and I'm the Executive Lead of Climate Change Response and Sustainability at the region of Halton. Uh, Halton region obviously is a region, regional municipality. Uh, we are in the GTHA area. We're comprised of uh, the city of Burlington, the town of Oakville, the town of Milton, and the town of Halton Hills. Um, so previous to uh, me coming to this role, I had a lot of uh, opportunities to work with the SDGs, whether that was through UNACTO or some other partnerships. Uh, so really had the privilege of working with many on, uh, on supporting the SDGs. Pleased to say that the region of Halton, we do have the SDGs actually embedded in our strategic plan. So each of our themes actually have uh, SDG goals, uh, which are incorporated within each objective. So uh, again, highlighting the intersectionality between the SDGs and our strategic objectives, uh, I think really gives it a great basis and a, and a great way to, to create action um, for the SDGs and ensure that they are implemented across our, uh, our corporation. So that's my quick snapshot, Hillary, to you. <laughs> Sounds great. Yes, thank you all so much for giving us a uh you know, a brief um, window into how your governments went about localizing the SDGs for, for your local purposes. Because as you can see, there is no kind of one correct way of doing it. There are different approaches uh, for, for each, each region. Um, and I think they're all um, on a path to success from what we can see so far. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, I will move on to our second question uh, and feel free, anyone can jump in from now on. Um, so what do you think is the value of the SDGs in your work um, and including how can they help to advance your work further? Maybe I'll start. Uh, so the goals are a common language uh, for understanding, for integration and accountability. Um, and this has really helped at building relationships interdepartmentally, interjurisdictionally, and with the community, um, and those stakeholders we collaborate with. Um, so it's, it's really a core foundation. Um, and they've, so with that base, we've started to um, align the SDGs with a number of systems or processes we have in the city. So um, the next four year multi year budget, uh, performance measurement and levels of service processes. So just, you know, critical questions are being asked um, at various points in uh, service delivery and development. Um, and our Winnipeg is, is driving an understanding um, that uh, how to integrate them into service goals departmental and business plans um, and we also have them in our administrative reports and so folks need to be accountable in in saying how they how the work they're doing aligns with uh, the different plans not just our winnipeg but um, the winnipeg climate action plan and the poverty reduction strategy as well so really trying to take that holistic approach um, so yeah there's some work we're trying to shift organizational culture uh, but it is a long road, and I think with the the, the development plan co-creation uh, process, uh, that was critical, um, and building leadership support along the way um, is kind of moving us from some of those surface level conversations to that deeper integration. I think I can follow Laura pretty closely, just as a a fellow. Our municipality with some thoughts. Um, so sustainability, just based on my portfolio, is a broad portfolio. Um, it doesn't really uh, just touch upon one thing, even though it's supposedly just the environment. I work with a lot of different stakeholders in, in different fields that touch upon many of the 17 SDGs. And I, I see Laura nodding, so I know she can agree with that. 
Um, like Laura said, the SDGs are a global standard um, that are being used by other entities. So this is, you know, this is a great opportunity for municipalities to not have to reinvent the wheel. And this, this is sort of what I was talking about, that conversation that we had um, about a year ago with a bunch of stakeholders, data stakeholders, um, you know, people who work more on the poverty, social equity side of things, um, leadership, planning, what have you. Like, we have all this data. The people who need it know where it is and they know how to access it. But maybe the people who don't know are struggling. So how can we get that out there? And this, this leads into the value of the SDGs in one of the most important aspects, which is the capacity piece, like building community awareness about them. You know, it's pretty straightforward. They're visually appealing, you know, it's not rocket science. So incorporating them as we track our progress specifically related to our community development plan, which is a 20 year plan where we want to grow our population. And as a municipality, we're reporting on this to mayor and council every year. What are we doing? Having something like this in place, and we're not there yet, but we're, we've, you know, we've got some of the scaffolding in place um, is really useful uh, to think about when you're building your value proposition or your business case um, to go down this road with other municipalities. Hillary, I echo uh, what Emily and, and Laura said. It really is all around synergies and, and those opportunities. And what we're all trying to do is storytell here. And uh, the SDGs are a great framework in order to provide that ecosystem of how all the goals can work together authentically and how we can leverage our successes and our work plans by elevating them uh, authentically and, and capturing that story and then conveying that story to whoever that stakeholder, that audience group may be. So. Uh, I think we're all kind of in line with uh, with how they are uh, they are helping. Definitely, yes. Thank you, all three, so much. Um, so we've started to get a little bit of an idea of how the SDGs can really help. Um, but for those who are kind of just coming to the SDGs, and perhaps yourselves at an earlier point in in your journey, when you first came upon the the framework, it was massive. It was intimidating. Um, and how would you say, if you could, um, how did you keep from being overwhelmed by this ambitiousness of the framework um, to be able to actually work with them in the end? Maybe I'll give Laura a break from being first and I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I'm going to take this question and sort of expand upon it and, and spin it as an opportunity, but also a, a different way of looking at things. Um, municipalities, especially the smaller ones, but I mean, Winnipeg's pretty big and I'm sure you can relate, Laura, we wear a lot of hats. Um, we have to manage multiple projects, work on different portfolios. Um, and sometimes it's easy to get in your tunnel, in your box and focus on that. But the SDGs are an opportunity to say, okay, sustainability is not just the responsibility of the sustainability person, it's everybody's. And this is a, like, this is, this ties into my work, and I'm going to put on my environment hat for a moment, um, about how, you know, conversation about climate change is not just about, you know, okay, how do we make our buildings more efficient, it's about affordability, you know, it's about health, it's about healthy living, clean air, um, helping people with breathing problems, dealing with, you know, ticks, for example, things like that. It's a multifaceted conversation. So as ambitious and daunting, especially when you get into the nitty gritties of the SDGs and you see under each pillar um, beyond that nice, you know, quadrant of 17 squares. Uh, wow, there's a lot there, but it's really having that conversation like, hey, we're all working together, trying to make our community a better place. We can tweak this, we can take a look, and this is one, going to be one of the valuable attributes from our mini VLR project. Um, with Algoma University to see, okay, like what, what's really applicable here? What are some things that we could work on? Um, so I guess as well, just taking it in pieces and like, you know, thinking about your municipality, Town of Bridge, Bridgewater is a great example. They're focused on being a net zero community. So they're really focused on the environmental building climate, climate pieces, take what you want, uh, but, but try to leverage this as a tool uh, to, 
improve awareness, um, find efficiencies with data, as opposed to just keeping it in silos and hidden maybe away from those who um, need it most, but also to report your wins. It's a great opportunity to have data that you can quantify your progress on your community goals, whatever they may be. Well, I guess I'll, I'll jump in and just add to what Emily said. And, and, you know, I do like to look at the SDGs as an ecosystem. Again, I come from an environmental background. It's a very easy, it's an easy mindset for me to be, you know, one goal should never be independent like the ecosystem. We can't pull one thing out of the ecosystem. It just won't function. So having those mutually reinforcing activities and looking at that as that opportunity, you know, you'll just strengthen, you'll deepen your impact if you can leverage the other goals and authentically propel them together. So really looking at the system as a whole and the goals as a whole, I don't think it should be looked at overwhelmingly. I think it should be looked at as it's very advantageous for anyone to really look for those synergies, amplify the impact, and then communicate what that is. So again, I, I, I think ecosystem looking at it like that is, is, could, could be a helpful mindset for those that feel that it is a little overwhelming. I echo many of the things uh, just shared. Um, I think uh, to build on those, you know, not working in silos uh, comment, um, you know, bring in anyone and everyone into your team. Uh, I know for Winnipeg, uh, we started off with a larger team at the beginning of our policy review, and then it ended with just two of us facilitating the process and now it's just me um, but along the way we you know had um, stakeholder groups who we co-created with we had an advisory committee uh, an internal advisory committee to share the the workload um, expertise and also the risk um, potentially of uh, unveiling a new uh, framework into the city so I think those that support network was a, a very helpful uh, piece of the puzzle and colleagues reminded us that you know this is a bit of an experiment and it doesn't have to be perfect the first time but we we still have to keep pushing forward and asking the critical questions to better understand and share the implications of the sdgs so it's uh it is overwhelming, but I think that can be useful as long as it doesn't paralyze us from taking action. Um, but the the complex issues that we're facing, climate change, uh, impacts of colonization, you know, they are overwhelming, and we should be addressing them with a sense of urgency um, that is hopefully building. Uh, but it. In government, it often feels very incremental and, and slow progress. So uh, that can be a challenge as well. But just keep going. Yeah, no, exactly. It, it, it can be overwhelming in many different ways, not just this isn't, of course, limited to the SDGs. Um, but what you spoke about with the, the support from, from the other departments, I think touches really well on kind of our next question. And I heard mentions of silos and ecosystems so I think this is really well connected to our next uh, our next question on um, different government departments. So I'm assuming that you are all part of a you know government department, and that there are other departments connected to yours, um, all trying to you know produce uh, city services that that work for all. Um, but how how would you recommend that? Um, people wanting to learn more about sharing the message of the SDGs go about that uh, from one department to another? I, I can jump in if you'd like. Um, so, you know, again, I think it comes down to communication. So, you know, how are the goals being utilized uh, within your organization is a great start. Obviously here at Halton, we have them in our strategic plan. So, um, utilizing that document, sharing that document widely and broadly uh, is, is effective um, uh, for sure. Uh, having events like this, though, I think is, is quite critical. So, you know, how can we talk about our opportunities and the challenges and how can we all work together? You know, it's, it's really not about um, one municipality or, or one town or one region. It's really about us all working better together 
And, and the same thing goes for uh, interdepartmental work, right? Really, how do we bring each other together and how do we have these authentic uh, conversations and how do we learn from that? Um, so I think having opportunities like this and having you know the SDSN group come together and sharing your resources and, and your support and having the Tamarack Institute uh, helping guide as well and providing communities of practice is, is really critical as, uh, as we're sharing this message and sharing this framework with others. I can go um, and add. Um, Lisa, you, you took one straight for me, which is avenues such as the COP are great. Um, you know, getting people together to share ideas, community of practice, can't, can't speak um, much higher about it than I already do. So great job. Um, I think though, from a municipal standpoint, um, oftentimes you have to wear a bit of a lobbyist hat. <laughs> if you will. Um, so I think leveraging projects uh, such as the mini VLR and, and examples from other communities like Winnipeg um, into conversations about standards is important. You have so many municipalities, even just here in Ontario and of course across Canada, and we're all fighting the same battles. We're all dealing with the same problems, um, you know, wait, like not enough people, not enough money, um, and more projects and responsibilities than we can manage. Um, so I've spoken about this even when it pertains to climate action and the action or lack thereof that municipalities are doing. You've got some leaders in our country, you know, who are doing great projects. But one thing here in Ontario that we don't have when it comes to climate action is a standard. So a regulation that says, okay, this is what you're going to do. And the SDGs, the standard is already there, but it's not recognized. Um, on the municipal level. So I think through conversations, um, dialogue, bit of lobbying here and there, figuring out a way to make a recommendation of this as a tool for monitoring progress and implementation would be useful. Are, are we there yet? No. But as I said, as a municipality, when you're looking for projects or, or think dollars, what have you, this is one of the hats that you have to wear. And I hear it time and time again, we're all fighting the same battles and we, we, we should, it's challenging when you're already struggling for resources to all have to reinvent that same tool or model to solve the same problem. And there's a framework here um, that already, that already exists. So keep spreading the word about the tool, the SDG as a tool to do that. Maybe we'll see some regulations that are updated that, you know, relate to this. I think that would help with the cause. Something that I've tried to do as much as possible is insert myself into as many conversations across departments as I can. So, you know, we've got a transportation master plan that's close to being complete. Um, we've recently had a transit master plan approved, um, social procurement policy uh, framework being developed, uh, a number of things. And so, you know, with the relationships that have been built through the policy co-creation in our Winnipeg, you know, you then are invited to a number of different tables um, interdepartmentally so that you can provide that alignment perspective and remind folks about the SDGs or have you considered X, Y, and Z. Um, so it kind of has snowballed um, a little bit and, and built some momentum to, to have space for the, the SDG conversation at a variety of tables, which has been really helpful. Wonderful. Yes. And thanks to those in the chat um, sharing resources on how to uh, kind of break down the SDGs and make them more, more approachable for everyone. Um, but thanks, of course, to you three for kind of working through, um, you know, that question about how we can um, get the message across to to others, uh, as that is really one of the, the main challenges is that level of awareness um, in all senses across departments, communities, uh, you name it. Um, but one thing that's been 
used increasingly as a way to raise awareness is um, reporting on the SDGs through something like, as Emily mentioned, their mini VLR in Sault Ste. Marie, um, the VLR produced by United Way Winnipeg and IASD for Winnipeg um, back earlier this year in February. Um, and I'm wondering what does reporting look like in a bit more detail in your community and what do you think is the value of reporting on the SDGs? I think I'll throw it to Lisa this time, if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Hillary. So we are not using the VLRs here in Halton. Um, it's just uh, hasn't come to fruition. Uh, so when we look at uh, our achievements on our current strategic plan, um, we have other indicators that in which we measure. So um, I know Laura uses the VLRs a lot. And to be honest with you, I was like super uh, happy to see this question come up because I really wanted to hear about uh, Winnipeg and their experiences and uh, hope that they can provide some uh, insights on how it did support and deepen their impact with, with the SDGs. So um, Laura, can I, can I throw it to you? Because I think you have a lot of lessons to share on this one. Sure, I mean, we were grateful to participate in the, the process, but IASD and United Way definitely led the charge on that and had a lot of the interjurisdictional partnerships and you know got the community stories integrated into the VLR. Uh, so the city provided some data and we were on you know the, the working group. Um, but uh, it was, I would say it was their baby, uh, or they they made it a, a really useful um, tool to share information. Um, so I guess the I can speak more to the what reporting looks like at the city and how we're trying to integrate things. So the, definitely there's value in reporting, um, but we also have limited resources for data collection and evaluation. And so um, that's why the PEG indicators um, and the VLR efforts from partners are critical um, to support that in an objective kind of way, even though, you know, we provide some city data to that mix. Um, it's it's a, a bit of an objective perspective. Um, so, and we, yeah, we also have a lot of master plans and, and implementation plans, um, but not a lot of resources to actually act on them and then therefore evaluate them. So it's a, a tricky mix there. Um, and just, maybe a challenge that we've had is the sustainable development goals are very high level and at the municipal level we're good at reporting on outputs or the actions through key performance indicators and so there's a bit of a gap between those high level and the things we already report on and so how do we kind of short or bridge that gap um, and make the things that we're reporting on really meaningful, um, especially on things that um, might not be solely our jurisdiction, um, you know, like poverty reduction, um, cities feel the impact of that most acutely, um, and there's a lot that we do to uh, try to address it, but, you know, the province is a big player in that as well, and so can we carve out what is our municipal impact versus what the province has done versus the federal government um, in those high level indicators. So just a few little challenge or conversations that we're having around um, how best to measure um, in a meaningful way. So, you know, building on what I've spoken about already, this community development plan, we want to measure our progress. The plan was given a name, it's called Future SSM, so Future Sault Ste. Marie SSM, um, and we are moving forward on its implementation. Every year the city reports, a couple times a year actually, possibly quarterly if I'm not mistaken, on progress on this plan. Um, with the change in council recently, we'll see um, because it was, we'll see if it's maintained. I, I think it will be. It's pretty much embedded now across the community, but it was uh, the brainchild of our outgoing council. Um, so we shall see what happens. That's another challenge 
in municipalities, right? You're, you're at the mercy of your council. Um, some projects are maintained, others, um, you know, may slip away. Um, but we're reporting on this project annually and tying it into all of the other, you know, projects that have stemmed from it, using this as a tool is, is something I'm hoping we can pursue and I'm, I'm trying to champion it as best I can. And I think when we see the results of this mini BLR, we'll have some good ammunition when we go um, to some higher ups. Uh, we have a, a committee of stakeholders in our community called the Algoma Leadership ta Table. Um, it doesn't just encompass stakeholders in Sault Ste. Marie, but it's our region within the province. Um, and they are actually looking at developing a community indicators plan. They're establishing a survey, and I believe that it's based on the Canadian well-being, uh, Canadian index of well-being, which to my understanding encompasses um, insights from the SDGs. So I think this will provide the people who are more boots on the ground within our community an opportunity to highlight what indicators are really pressing. Uh, speaking to what I, I talked about earlier about, you know, taking the SDGs and just using the ones that maybe fit most to your community um, as, a, as a way to look at how we can better access data and really track our progress in communities in the community of Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> Right. Yes. Thanks. It's yeah. A little um, compared to you. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it can be um, for sure a, a challenging, but even when these reports such as VLRs come out, um, the time that it takes to analyze it, go through it and make sure that um, those things that are learned from the report actually make their way to policy. I think that's one of the, the challenges that we're still kind of working on um, at this point. Um, and Laura spoke a little bit about those challenges that, you know, um, that takes time to, uh, if I may kind of come in with some of the uh, the experience from the other side, um, in creating the VLR through the PEG partnership with ISD and United Way Winnipeg, um, quite a large part of, you know, why we wanted to create the VLR had to do with, of course, the awareness of the SDGs within Winnipeg. Um, but of course, it also has to do with um, reminding both the community and um, decision makers at the local level, this is where we are um, and and putting that question out there saying, is this where we wanna be? Uh, and if not, then how do we wanna get to where it is that we wanna be? Um, so one of, the, one of the things that we're very, very thankful for at this moment at least is that we have pretty good relationships with um, many at kind of all levels of government um, and that includes within the, the city of Winnipeg. So of course, Laura is, is um, a great contact that uh, she's helped us out a lot, as she mentioned, with getting access to data. Um, but we've also met as the, the PEG partnership showing off the data with city councillors. We've met with, with the mayor and, and briefed the, the outgoing mayor. Um, tomorrow is, is Winnipeg's uh, municipal election, in fact. So we are likely to get a new slate of city councillors and uh, most definitely getting a new mayor considering the incumbent is uh, not on the ballot this time. Um, but that that uncertainty is there. And I think Emily, you kind of mentioned it that uh, as a, a worker within, within the city government, you are kind of um, subject to the, the interests of your council. Um, so from, from our perspective as well, um, you know, being an outside party, we're also kind of eager uh, to see what will what will come out of this this election um, tomorrow for Winnipeg because it it will change kind of the the direction um, of the work that we're doing I think um, but yeah definitely I think the VLR if if um, if nothing else it serves as a, an incredible awareness tool to to bring these questions forth to to decision makers in the community more broadly. Um, so thank you all for for sharing that that response as well because it is a challenge that we're we're all kind of working on connecting those things to policy. Um, but if I may, we're we're going to move on to the second last question. Um, so I know we have only a little bit of time left before we have to jump into the Q and A. Um, but can you go over a little bit about what you're hoping to do with the SDGs? Um, just kind of a bullet list of maybe that's 
too too short. Um, but uh, just what your hopes are for for the next few years, um, depending on, of course, what happens with with local government um, priorities. But uh, feel free to share what you think might be in the in the mix. I'll uh, start by feeding off of some of your comments, Hillary, about the election tomorrow. Uh, so plan implementation is uh, on our minds, um, the next hurdle, and we're initiating the first of a reoccurring strategic priorities action plan um, that we're proposing we take with incoming council. Uh, we had the support of outgoing council, but now it's a bit of a, a learning process to um, gain their participation uh, in in the new SPAP, we call it good old public service acronyms. Um, and so we're trying to connect the dots between their election priorities and existing master plans, including our Winnipeg with the SDGs. So, you know, starting a, a trust building process, we just want to listen to council, um, have public the public service share where things align or are misaligned and the implications of the priorities and the SDGs would be part of that. So we're hoping to build some common ground there and accelerate um, whatever we can uh, into the SPAP and um, have those priorities funded in the next uh, four-year multi-year budget. So there's, there's a lot of hope and uncertainty around that process, but we're Hoping to get that done um, early in the or starting in November until about March of 2023. So that's uh, what's up next. Yeah, I think I can agree with a lot of what Laura said. Um, but I guess how we see this playing out is it's a tool that could be used to streamline uh, access to information and progress in our community. Um, and it also is a tool that I'm hoping we can leverage the SDGs um, to reiterate the importance of climate action, which is a big part of my portfolio. And this is a really easy way, uh, transparent way. And you, you heard a lot about that during our election, you know, transparency, um, you know, looking for efficiencies. And I think, I think that we could use this as a pitch for that. So when we see the final report, I think we'll have a good foundation and hopefully continue to build the case. Um, yeah, great question, Hillary, again, building upon Emily and, and Laura, obviously, uh, it was election, uh, municipal elections last evening uh, in, in Ontario, so uh, we will be advancing a, a new strategic plan, and uh, uh, with, uh, obviously, we have to wait to see what council uh, will do, and uh, look, looking forward to the next steps, and, uh, and obviously, talking with our partners that are using the SDGs day to day. Um, such as the Halton District School Board that has them embedded at the University of Waterloo and other partners. So just looking forward to the next steps. Great. Yes. Well, at this point, we have one final question, um, but I will actually invite the um, audience to start thinking of your questions that you might have. Um, very sorry that we've kind of shortened the time a little bit, um, but start thinking at this moment. And I'm going to bring in the final question. Um, this definitely is succinct as possible, um, but what lessons or advice would you have uh, that you've learned for other governments looking to start out with the SDGs? Uh, I can jump in, uh, Hillary, on this one if you'd like. So I think uh, connections and relationships are, are critical. Uh, I, I think listening to others that are advancing this work and being open um, to this work and, and supporting your work plan and your internal uh, de departments and divisions is is important. So um, I, I would say that would be my advice. I echo that. Um, trusting relationships are critical, clear communication uh, and co-creation. Uh, if you've got people along for the ride, um, it's a lot easier to advance your goals. Um, I think I can agree, especially with the communication piece that's been mentioned a lot, I think by Lisa. Um, 
the issue that we ran into um, at the get-go when we were getting our planning department on board with this mini VLR project um, was that many of the goals outlined in the SDGs are um, the primary responsibility of more senior levels of government, which again, when they were created, of course, you know, made sense. They were looking more at like national uh, governments, so things like, you know, um, clean energy, peace and justice, strong institutions, things like that. Um, so bringing it down to a level to say, hey, yeah, we get that, but this is sort of that, that thing that we all talk about taking a holistic approach on all hands on deck, working towards that common objective. And this is a great tool to help us get there. So going back to the question about, wow, the SDGs can be really daunting. Um, this is a great way to, to take an opportunity, step back, kind of chew it down a little to make it more understandable by all of your departments who might be maybe a bit more hesitant to get on board with this. Um, and take those those baby steps, which we're doing here at the city of Sault Ste. Marie. Great. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I'm sure, or at least I hope, that uh, everyone in the audience has learned quite a bit. I know I have. It was great to to speak to um, government partners on on these topics because it's certainly something that we're working towards is these partnerships. Um, so at the moment, I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, but feel free to to post any questions or if you'd like to raise your hand and then unmute yourselves, I believe that's okay as well. But any questions for our panelists? Okay, I see a couple hands. Uh, I believe, uh, Luis, you are first on my screen, so go ahead. Uh, thanks, Hillary, and, and thanks for all the presentations. That's really good. It's uh, always lots to learn. And it's kind of a follow-up question from, from the last one. Because um, as was mentioned, and I'm in London, Ontario, so we just, uh, we now know our new mayor and a, a lot of new councillors. And um, one of the challenges that uh, we face here locally is that with the transition of government, there's always this learning curve with the new elected officials. Um, and I know that a lot of the work that is done is also, uh, well, is done by city staff. So it's a uh, I, I just would like to hear from, from your perspective, like how important it is to get um, the council on board or at least having a basic understanding of the SDGs or like the focus should, should really be working with city staff uh, on implementing and moving forward VLRs or SDG planning and, and things like that. Uh, any thoughts? Um, Louise, I can start if that's okay. Um, I, I, you know, I think having that strategic document that we have in the strategic business plan is a great start. So uh, anyone coming new onto council, obviously, will be reviewing the past um, uh, strategic plan. So right there, they see the SDGs are front and center. So every theme, they have that connection. I think the other thing I, I point out here at Halton um, is uh, the position in which I sit, that executive lead climate change response and sustainability is a brand new position at our organization. I sit in the CAO's office. Um, within the organization. And uh, I always say to the left of me is uh, is Cassandra Velasco. She's our uh, equity and diversity uh, executive lead. And then to the right of me is uh, Eddie Robinson and he is the um, indigenous uh, knowledge keeper here um, for us. Um, and we have an MOU with the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And all of our work is quite inter um, um, integrated with each other. And we are advancing um, quite a bit internally for knowledge mobilization for the, the departments and divisions. So um, again, I, I think that's being done very well. We're propelling that very well here in Holton by really not, again, working in silos, but looking at everything at that level and, and advancing our work collectively. Great, well, if we don't have any burning answers from Emily or Laura, I will jump ahead to the next question. There's one in the chat, but I will go to Mohammed. Uh, who has his hand up first, and then I'll address the question in the chat. Thanks. Um, thank you very much, uh, Hillary and everybody. It's uh, really wonderful to uh, hear all uh, these perspectives. Um, I, I just will be very quick with my question. Uh, have you considered this to the panelists, uh, the Canadian Indicators Framework, um, as a way to localize the SDGs in your communities? And uh, and and in, do you see value in it? And, and would you engage with the uh, SDG unit at Employment and Social Development Canada to maybe make it better? Uh, because I, I'm coming in with that kind of thinking of 
This tool is imperfect as I have reviewed it, uh, but it could become better if there's more engagement uh, from municipalities and local actors with it, uh, with the federal government to make it better so that there's a framework that is easier for Canadians to play with as opposed to the global framework uh, like the SDGs. I wonder if, if you guys have any thoughts on this or if you deliberated this at all. Thank you very much. And this was really wonderful conversation. I think just like we're trying to align the SDGs within the municipal organizations, it needs to happen from the top government all the way down and, and have some alignment and consistency um, so that we're all reporting on the same things. Because, um, you know, adding layers of bureaucracy or trying to, you know, fit it into existing structures that it doesn't quite work well with or um, existing reporting frameworks, um, it becomes quite challenging. So if there if there was an opportunity for for integration um, at that higher level, I definitely open to it. I know like the MBN Canada has their measures and uh, the city of Winnipeg, uh, you know, reports on some of those and likes to compare between cities how how we're doing. Uh, so it would, it would be helpful. Yeah, I can agree with Laura on that. And it speaks to what I, I talked about earlier about a standard. Um, there's so many cool ways, you know, smart ways that we can you know, track community development progress, um, different tools, like different, you, you've mentioned a couple, you know, different organizations that have really great processes, but we're all strapped as municipalities and like pretty much everybody else right now. Um, and we just, we can't do it all. But if there was, as, and I, I've had this conversation earlier, there are certain regulations that municipalities have to report on every year, certain standards, et cetera, you know, thou shalt do X, Y, and Z by X date. If there was a standardization regarding sustainability reporting, um, or even climate reporting for that matter, putting on my environmental hat for a moment, I think it'd be great. So from an efficiency standpoint, when you're dealing with different organizations and different types of red tape, we have, we ha at least they're all there, but if we have the SDGs as a tool that we're all using and we start saying, hey, let's let's all look to these. You may have these standards, but if they tie into the SDGs, then you've got maybe some, some room for some efficiencies because there's just no way that we can take on all these different frameworks. You know, this one's here. It's been around for a while. It's, it's working. It's globally recognized. And if these other institutions incorporate elements of them super, but if we can all continue to point back towards that one standard, we might be a little bit further towards that progress. Are we gonna go there? I don't know, but this is just me saying what I think could work from an efficiency standpoint. Great, thank you so much for your responses. We do have, at the moment, I see just one more question in the chat from Jill, I'll read it out. Um, other than integrating the SDGs into planning and strategic direction, um, documents. Uh, can you give us a couple examples of the municipal role or regional role in SDG implementation or manifestation, for example, towards social equity goals? I think going back to what I've said um, quite a bit is start like incorporate them in that dialogue with those stakeholders building off what Laura said she she deals with as many stakeholders or different interest groups as she can um, because a conversation about social equity is a conversation about climate change a conversation about food security is a conversation about affordability right these you know but we all have our our, our tunnels and our buckets that we focus on different uh, different personnel what have you but incorporating them into that conversation with social equity and maybe it's a question of educating them maybe they don't know who about the sggs or they're not thinking about them because they have so many others but having those conversations within your community can i think get you all on that same page good place to start at least fantastic oh laura maybe i'll just jump in it may be a bit of a tangent but um even though like the question was about social equity, but I'm gonna say that the budget 
is an example of the most important tool that we have as a municipality that's where the rubber hits the road. Um, so how can we integrate the SDGs into our budgets and, um, you know, we've had different weighting criteria. you know, environment gets 7% in an asset management prioritization tool or um, the social equity get a certain weighting of consideration or do we just report on how much money is spent to achieve social equity projects? I'm not sure exactly how that best manifests, but um, if there's clear connection to the budget process, I think that that gets us uh, a lot of the way there. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for this discussion. Um, I think we got some really, really great answers. And um, I will close the panel and pass it off to Laura to close the session. Thank you all so much again. Mm -hmm.